Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Pop of Color. I'm Claire Cheryl. I am your host. This is a music industry late night talk show aimed at colorful bands and artists. Tonight's special presentation is going to be on where it's worth investing your money or if you are looking to spend money on certain things to advance your music career. Here are a few things to do and here are some strategies to go and here's how to vet whether it's worth it for you. Now then, we also discuss the news first and I don't usually discuss celebrity news because I like to maintain the solution that I have some level of class. However, this is rather important for the independent music scene, so I wanted to take apart this story. T-Swizzle. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I have been a huge Taylor Swift fan for so long. In fact, I'll link you in the description of this video um, an article I wrote way back when that takes a, a look at her early fan loyalty building prior to her very, very first self-released album. Now, Taylor has been signed to Big Machine Records since she was 15. So this is, they're an independent record label that is distributed by Universal. Well, and she's been with them since she's 15, and now on the one year, the one year anniversary of her sixth album release, Reputation, is coming up, which means that for the first time in 13 years, she's able to renegotiate her contract. So she is essentially a free agent She's able to leave, she's able to stay, she can do whatever, she can ask for whatever she wants. So I wanted to take a look at what could possibly play out. So, oh, now with Big Machine, which is a country label, I'm pretty sure Taylor's one of their only pop artists on there. Her, um, sources say that she commands about, she brings in about 80% of their revenue. So clearly she is a heavy hitter in this label and as well, well she's a heavy hitter in the world she's one of the biggest artists in the world so if she walks if she walks away from big machine at the end of the 13 years in november this will engage an all-out bidding war with i'm sure the major labels even the smaller labels imagine if you could try so i have narrowed down three potential option options that sh she that are available and I want to know in the description, in the comments of this video, what you think is the smartest move, what you would do in this situation. Because the world really is changing when it comes to the music industry. And, and if she has, and the reason most emerging artists will sign with a label is because they have the resources and they have the money to put into investing in studio time and radio promotions and stuff. Taylor has that money now. She's made it now. What does she need them for? So option one, she signs with another major, whether it be Warner Music Group or Sony Music, or she gets upstream to Universal proper, proper, top tier. So that's an option. She would probably ask for humongous amounts of money, humongous amounts of cash, because she's able to and they would willingly give it to her. Second option is to stay with Big Machine. Um, her father owns a stake in Big Machine because they invested at the beginning, but now they can renegotiate the terms. Taylor was one of the first three, four artists signed to Big Machine back way back when in the mid-2000s. So as a result, because I think they didn't know how she was going to turn out. They didn't know how they were going to turn out. So it, so maybe now she can ask for a larger percentage, bigger upfront royal, bigger royalty rate, a bigger upfront advance, bonuses, or something because she's earned it and she's able to ask for it now that she's proven her worth. Another possibility is, once again, because she bring, she reportedly brings in 80% of the revenue, just owning part of the company in the sense of going up to the CEO, Scott Borchetta, and being like, hey, if you want me to stay, I want 51% of this company. I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> um, she is my um, business goals. And lastly, 
because the only leverage Big Machine still has other than loyalty is that they still own the masters to all the music she recorded with them. For those of you who are who don't know the technical term, master recordings is the actual recording of the song. So she might be able to, she can't sell the music, like in the sense of, no, let me rephrase that. Going forward, she's able to, if she signed with a new label or under new terms, she would, she could release new music and then she would get royalties at that rate. But the, because Big Machine still owns the masters of all her songs from Teardrops on My Guitar to You Belong With Me to Shake It Off throughout, they would be still owning the majority of that and they would still have total control over those. Um, so if she could buy her masters back um, and then just leave. So whether it be going independent, starting her own label where she is the CEO, that's a possibility. I mean, she has the connection. She has the clout in the industry. I mean, look at the way she took on Spotify and Apple Music a couple years back from 1989. So, I would like to know what you think of this situation. And please enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, lovelies. So, we've got an itty bitty little low key setup today. But, Nevertheless, we're going to have a good time with today's main theme in the topic, which is where to invest um, your money for music industry promotional business purposes. So I do little flashcards and I'll be like, pick a card, pick a card, and each one has a different subject on it, and then I'll quickly give my two cents on each one. Ready? Let's begin. And zoom. Online courses. Okay, if you are going to, there are, the independent music business is very much a wild rest, west right now. With the rise of cheaper electronics, this means that anyone can produce music in their bedroom, and therefore er, the, um, the labels aren't the gatekeepers, and there's a whole new industry of the independent artists that people seek to cater to. For example, this is what I do. I'm not aiming at big name artists to teach them how to market themselves. I'm catering to the independents. So there are people who go steps further who are older and more experienced than say me and they feel confident enough to put out these big video courses or ebooks that they sell for up to an exorbitant amount of money convincing you that this is going to teach you how to make it in the music industry. If you are going to take one of these courses, you need to, I would recommend you look at who this person is, what they've done, who they've worked with in the sense of people who've done their course, are they, do they sound like you, have they achieved results that you would seek to achieve while deciding what would be the best option for you with your budget. Next up. Official website. Okay. So, as an artist, you do need an official website website if you want to show that you are serious about your music career beyond just playing on weekends and getting paid in beer by the venue. So, when it comes to official websites, there's different ways you can set it up. I recommend having your own domain. My, to my top recommendation, of course, is building the website from scratch. I know most of you are very busy and can't be doing that. I built the Pop of Color website domain from scratch. There are also, you can hire someone out to do that, that a friend. And al alternatively, there are also places that are subscription by the month, such as Banzoogle, Squarespace, Wix, you get the idea. Just have something that you own because when it comes to social media real estate, you're renting that space. Is If Facebook's algorithms change, if Twitter shuts down tomorrow, you don't have a say and you can't control that. But if you have a website that is yours forever, then that makes a lot of sense. 
Okay, it's a wise investment. Next up, business cards. Yes, 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 please invest in business cards. Um, that would be very good to have more than just a strip of flimsy paper such as this to write down all your socials on or ask the CEO to hand over their iPhone X to you for you to write your information on. Nice business cards, a nice design, and I will link you to some articles about that to help you, you with design do's and don'ts. Are we good? Okay. Media coverage. Don't submit to pay to placement blogs. That is my two cents. These are the blogs that they'll post any artist's music for a fee and just copy and paste their bio. You're not fooling anyone. You're just playing pretend with a bunch of other people who are playing pretend and it's not going to help your career. Um, when it comes to submission fees, such as for Submit Hub, for example, and those type of places, uh, be caref carefully pinpoint the places you stand the best shot at getting into and get the most for your investment by carefully crafting your pitch. If it comes to a PR company, you don't need PR until you are at a big enough point where you wanna make a big enough statement because don't forget public relations agencies, PR companies, they need to be booked for several months and they charge per their time, not for the results they get you. So you need to be making enough money that this will be really worth it for you and you will get the, re the money back in the results desired. Um, on, second, on another off branch of that, when it comes to management, for example, don't, you don't need to get a manager until you have something to manage and until 15% of your take home music industry income. So that's what you're, out of what you're currently making because that's what a manager typically earns from an artist would be worth someone's time. So if you're making about a hundred bucks a month, ha having a manager for $15 a month might not be worth their time, for example. And the last card I want to, I have, have here for this quick little segment is um, Facebook investments. Okay, so there's different ways. So I think Facebook is fantastic when it comes to marketing and when it comes to advertisements. You cannot get such great results for such a cheap investment if you're placing ads in magazines, on TV, on the radio, and billboard, on billboards on the side of the road. You're never gonna get this. This personalization and, and being able to track the results. So Facebook ads, yes. Don't go overboard on them if you don't have a clear result. But yeah, it, it's amazing to see the insights that you are in of your audience you're able to have have access to. Like no wonder people are upset at Facebook for giving away all their personal details. If someone, if a random Joe like me can look at all this stuff and see all these demographic informations and see and spot these trends, then oh my goodness, yes. Um, don't buy fake followers though. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. Once again, my name is Claire Charon. You can check me out at my blog, popofcolormusic.com. I post articles weekly um, on music industry discussions, interviews, industry insights for colorful bands and artists. I also have pro offer professional services from bio writing to auditing your social media to building Meet BK with you to help artists in the industry because I just, I really, I really enjoy being in between the artist side and the business side. I started out as a singer-songwriter, for those of you who don't know, and I discovered that I liked the business side more, and I was more talented at the business side than I'll ever be playing guitar. But I was kind of bored by most of the stuff that was out there, and if I, and I managed to get through like the giant 500 page bricks of music business books, but Artists won't, they've got a lot of time. They don't, they have limited time. And you all will need to know the essentials and want to know it in a way that conveys it to its most relevant. So consider me your best friend who drinks tea 
and talks about the music industry with you. Once again, have a fantastic week. Be good to each other. I will see you next time.